Hey everybody, this is Eric. And today, we're gonna look at a few different ways to apply hatches in layout. So when I say a few different ways, it's because that hatching in layout or hatching in 2D documentation can be tricky. Depends on whether how perfect you want it, whether your model's complex or not, whether you want it to be able to change it very quickly and swap and try different patterns. So what I want to do is show you a few different ways and then let you pick which one you think is the best way to hatch your layout documents. So let's do it. So I'm in layout here. I actually don't want to start in layout. I'm going to start in SketchUp, which is where most things start. When we go to layout, we often have to do some things first. So what I want to do is just kind of take a look at the model that I'm using. It's this cool little multi-leveled contemporary house. I've already set up a scene here. So if I click on plan view, then you can see I've got a section cut applied and that's about it. So that's kind of what I need to do. I want to send this to layout to do some documentation, but I uh, the point is that I want to differentiate the materials so that I can give it sort of something more schematic or construction document uh, looking kind of drawing. So that's kind of the goal. So let's do that. Let's first make sure that I'm centered and I'm gonna say file, save, file, send to layout. And it's gonna send it to a nice fresh new drawing. So I'm gonna click A3 landscape. I think that'll be a good size to start. And it doesn't matter, but just out of habit, I do like to always give it a scale. So it's not important to this part of the process, but just, you know, best practices. So I've got my drawing here. It's to scale and it's ready, you know, it's positioned, it's ready for me to apply hatches. Now, if you haven't done this already, a hatch is sort of called a pattern in layout. So what I wanna do is turn fill off and I wanna turn pattern on. And then before I actually get started, I'm going to look for a pattern that I think would be good. So you can go all patterns, maybe something geometric, some line work, maybe something that looks uh, like a herringbone could be cool. So I'll give you an example. If I made a rectangle, there's my hatch pattern. Um, I'll zoom in a little bit. So I wanna scale that up a little bit. So I'm gonna switch over here to two times. And then if I draw another rectangle, you can see it's a little bit larger. I like that better. So didn't really need to do that. That's just so I can get my hatch looking good. So the first way that I think some of you are familiar with drawing hatches would be to use the line tool. See, if I use the rectangle tool, problem is, is I just covered up all my furniture. Now I'm assuming here that I wanna hatch my floor and I wanna sort of call that out as a particular material. If I don't use the rectangle, then I can use the line tool, but I'm not exactly going to want to trace around all of these objects. That could take a long time. And then of course, what happens if I moved one of the objects in my model, then all of a sudden I would have to update the hatch as well. So I would say, don't do it that way. That's, you know, unless it's a super simple little move and you know your model is not gonna change, maybe that works. But for the most part, uh, it's not gonna work for me. So I'm gonna get rid of that and say, no, let's not do it that way. So let me show you another way to do it. You could also try copying and pasting your viewport right on top. Now, let me show you here. I've got two viewports. They're sitting, you can see if I move it, they're right on top of each other. And on this top viewport, I could come over here and basically turn everything off except the furniture. So I'm gonna turn off the walls and any entourage. So basically, if I move this viewport that's on top, it should be just the furnishings. Now the cool thing about that is that I could then use the rectangle tool, bring that over and then grab this top viewport and say arrange, bring to front. Now that's okay too, but the problem is when I do that is that um, I've got, depending on how you've set your model up, you can see I've got my stairs sticking down. So it's, uh, it's covering my doors here. It's still not perfect. I was able to get it underneath some of my furnishings, but depending on how your model's set up and depending on how it's layered, it may not exactly work 
for you exactly like you want. So in this case, you can see my stairs are coming down. I put that on my furniture layer. Maybe I shouldn't have. Either way, it's, it's kind of a start, but it's not getting me exactly where I want. So let's go ahead and delete that. It's a cool tip of stacking viewports. It might work for you. I'm going to delete that and just say, you know what? What if I skipped layout completely? What if I didn't hatch in layout? What if I did it in SketchUp where I had a little bit more control? So I'm going to pop back over to my SketchUp model, which is here. And I'm going to switch over to what's called color by tag mode in my tag panel. So right now it's, it's hidden line style, so you won't see it because I've colored everything white. But if I go back to textured or uh, shaded with textures, you can see that my floor tag, I've given a color so that it stands out. Everything else I've just made white or gray. It doesn't really matter. Like you can see, I'm just making, I'm just overriding all the colors in white because I want it to look, I only want to hatch uh, the pieces. Uh, I'm only going to apply a color to the things that I want to be hatched. So stay with me here. Instead of applying a color, I can actually apply a texture. So I'm going to click on uh, a floor and it's going to ask me what texture do I want? So let me first pick one before I do that. I'm going to click over here to, I have some really cool patterns. So I'm going to scroll down or up depending on which direction I'm at. I'm going to find that same herringbone pattern and there it is. It's right there. That's the one I wanted to use in layout. So I'm going to click on my color in my tags panel. It's going to ask me which pattern do you want to use. I'm going to click herringbone and then click OK. And you can see what it's doing. It's overriding the actual material. So the actual material is going to be um, wood. So I'm not actually replacing the material. I'm overriding it using the color by tags panel. So in this case, I'm overriding it with a hatch. Now, if you look at that and say, well, again, kind of like in layout, when I doubled the size of the hatch, this is a little bit small. I can do that right here in SketchUp as well. So let me go, let me show you how to do that. If you don't like the default size, I will just draw just a simple rectangle and I will apply that same hatch to it. And if I want to make change the scale, I could come over here to that hatch pattern in my model and I can edit that size. So by default, it's at 1.5 feet. So that's what it was when I chose it directly from the materials library. So if I double that and go three feet and close, now I have that material in my model and it's at a larger size. So instead of choosing it from the default library, in which case that material is too small, I'll choose it from, I'll choose the edited material that, I've, that is coming from my model. So let's grab that again. It's going to say, which one do you want? I'm going to grab the edited size, which is going to be twice as big, and click OK. Now, when I turn my color by tags override back on, you can see there it is. I don't need that. That was just there just so you could see the, how I scaled this texture and to make sure that it was in my model so I could edit it. And that's it. So if I go back to my plan view, there it is. But I can also save a new scene and that can have this new style applied to it. So I have my hidden line style and I have my hatch style. So they're basically, both of those two are applied. One of them is applied to one scene and one of them is applied to another scene. So that's pretty much it. I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna pop over to layout. Let's see here, here is my layout. And then what I would do is make sure, of course, if you made changes, update the model so those changes are reflected. And then here, forget the patterns. I'm not going to do it that way. Forget the shapes and the fills and the strokes and all that. Forget stacking viewports. I'm not going to do with tag overrides. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to make sure that my viewport is selected. And I'm going to switch from my plan scene to my hatch scene. So it's going to bring in that color by tag override that I just created. And there it is. So what's nice about this is that it applies to just to all the floors that are on that tag. So if I have multiple areas, it'll apply to everything on that tag at the same time. The other thing is you can see that it picks up the order. So here I've got my doors and I have my furniture and it remembers everything. So even if I went into my SketchUp model 
and I made a change. Like for example, I needed to come over here and just move that table for whatever reason. Or if I wanted to bring and grab another table, that's probably not going to fit in that space, but you get the idea. I can come over here, save the model, and then update that viewport reference. And you can see what it does is it just changes instantly. So my hatch is still there, my furnishings are right there, everything's exactly where I want it to be. So that's a pretty cool way to sort of instantly generate hatches, is actually not to do it in layout at all, it's to do it in SketchUp and to do it not by changing the material, but by overriding the material using the color by tags function. As always, that's a lot, but the cool thing about it is that like everything that I share in SketchUp, a little bit of thinking up front actually pays off big down the road. So this idea of saying, I'm going to take the time to apply a hatch to my color by tag settings, then once I'm in layout, that's it. it you know, it applies it everywhere you want it to be, depending on how you set your model up. So give it a try. You can always go back and still draw manual hatches. You can also still stack viewports. Nothing wrong with either of those methods. I just want to give you this third way to do it. Depending on your needs, this might actually be the quickest, most flexible, and easiest way to apply hatches to layout, to do it in SketchUp. So with that note, I'm going to leave you here. I'm going to say thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment. Let us know what you think. Does this work for you? Have you tried this? Does it not work? Let us know in those comments, and we'll keep that conversation going. And until then, I will see you next time. Thanks.